Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we'll be taking a look at this blueprint title effect. So it's quite an intriguing process and I think it's probably going to be quite adaptable. So let's have a look at how it's done. So first of all, let's check out our project setup. I've got 1920, 1080. I've got 24 frames a second and I've got a duration of 100 frames. So the first thing I want to do is come over to library, generators, bring in a color solid. And let's just adjust this, not too saturated, something like this. And then over that, I'm going to add a grid. So again, generators and grid, bring this in. Come over to the inspector. Let's have a background width and height of 50. 50 for both of those, a line width of one. Let's just set its blend mode to add and maybe just adjust the color of those lines. So I'm gonna pick the color we've already used for the background and actually just with that additive blend mode, that's probably enough. It's just giving me this faint grid. So I like that. I'm gonna call this group background. And then I'm going to make a new group, object new group. And into this, I'm going to add some text. So I'm going to type the word example, come over to format. I'm using this nice font called Res, which you can download for free from duffont.com. And I'll put a link to that in the description. Make sure to center align it. Let's scale it up a bit. Let's go for something like 300. And then let's make sure to center it up here. And let's go with a baseline value of negative 50. So the next thing I want to do is to make a clone of this group. So right click, make clone layer, and let's just temporarily turn off the original group. So what I want to do with this is first of all, to come over to filters and stylize and fill. And I want to set the fill color to black. And then I want to come to filters and border and stroke. Uh, the defaults of this are really annoying. So I want white as the color. I want a width of one, and let's turn that threshold down to zero. So what I'm gonna do with this group is actually make another clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. And then that group, I'm just gonna send behind everything else. And we can turn it off. We're not interested in that anymore and close it on down. Let's close the background while we're at it. And this other group here, I want to move to the top and we'll use that eventually, but not just yet. So now we've got a group with a clone of a clone and we can start the process. So first of all, I want to change the blend mode of this group to add. So we're just getting the outline in this case. And I also come, I want to come over and set it to fixed resolution. So the trick to this effect is that we're going to use filters, distortion and scrape. And I think you can probably already see where we're going with this. So first of all, I want to set the amount to 200. And then you can see that what's really important here is where we adjust, in this case, the Y value. And that's what I want. I just want to pick up the bottom of these letters and they, they all sort of scrape upwards. If we have it set at zero, it's, it's giving me too much. I just want a little bit of the, and you can see that if I kind of in the middle of something, it's not right either. We don't want these kind of fat streaks and I don't want that. So I just want to adjust it. So I'm really just getting the, the bottom curves or the bottom shapes of the letters like that. So in this case, I'm going to go for negative 35 there. So then I'm going to rename this group and I'm going to call it up because the scrape is going upwards. And we want to do this for all four directions. So left and right and down. So let's duplicate this group, right click, duplicate. Let's call this down and let's come back to the scrape filter and we want to change the rotation angle. So I'm going to go with an angle of 180. Let's just turn off the up for the time being. And in this case, we want to do the opposite. We want to get the, getting the top edge only. So again, let's just adjust that center. I know that actually that the value I want is 70, but you can sort of scroll until you get it. You know, again, you want to avoid that effect there where we're getting those fat, ugly bars and we don't want that. And so now combined with 
the up we get that, which is you can already start to see our text sort of reforming around these lines. So then let's duplicate this again. Right click duplicate. Let's turn off the other two where we work on this and come back to the filter. So we've had zero, we've had 180. So let's go for 90. And you can see this is all going off to the left. So let's call this group left. And again, we need to adjust the position, but it's not the Y we're interested in this case. I'm going to zero that out for tidiness, but actually it's irrelevant because of the angle we're using. And what I'm going to do is just adjust this X center value to 420. And you can see that in this case, I'm going for slightly more than just the, the ends there. I actually want most of the letter like that. So we can now duplicate that again, right click duplicate. Let's turn off the left. Obviously we now know this is the right. So coming back to the filter, the opposite of 90 is 270. And we want the negative of this X value. So negative 420, and we're picking up that E on the other end. So we've now got this, and you can see how the, the text has kind of rather nicely built up. We haven't got all of it, but we've got enough to create the effect that we want. So what we'll do with this top group here, let's turn it back on again. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade in this text. So what we need is to add to this group, we need to add basic motion fade in, fade out. We don't want to fade out, but we do want to fade in. Let's make that 10 frames and let's offset the start time by 20 frames. And now you'll see that that kind of pops in like that. Now we can actually style this text and we can come to the appearance. Let's, for example, just again, pick this color for the face and maybe make it just a little bit brighter, maybe a bit deep, more desaturated, something like that. Turn on outline as well. And let's go for white for that. And we just want an outline width of one. And I think what I'm also going to do is with this group, I'm just going to set its blend mode to add. And then we can see the lines through. I'm not entirely happy with that color, but let's move on and talk about animating the, the lines themselves. So let's come to our up group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate its Y position. So right click on that, add parameter behavior and ramp. And we're going to have a start value of negative 1080, and we're going to have an end offset of 70. And if we look how that works, you can see that comes up from the bottom like that. And so we need to do the same thing with the other directions. So actually, I'm going to copy that holding down the Option key. I'm going to drag it onto the down. And then in this case, we can just edit that start value to be positive 1080. And then you can see how those are working. And we're getting those nice shapes of the, the tops and bottoms of the letters moving into position. So let's again copy this ramp. So hold down the Option key and drag it onto the left. In this case, we want to have a different direction. So let's apply it to the Properties Transform position X instead. In this case, let's have a start value of 1920 because that's the width of our project. And then we can co again copy this onto the right. So holding down the Option key, drag it onto the right group. And we just need to make that negative 1920. So now we've got the animation looking like this. So then we also want the lines to disappear, but we don't want to just reverse that animation because that would look quite dull. And we don't, don't want to, certainly don't want to fade them off, which would be a bit of a cheat. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an image mask. So I'm going to select that up group, come down to the rectangle mask and very roughly draw a rectangle mask. And let's make sure to center it up, right click reset parameter. Let's come to the mask scale and let's make it 1920 square. And then we can use that same one for each of the groups. So let's talk about animating this mask. Let's come to its properties and the Y position. Again, right click, add parameter behavior, ramp. We're going to have an end value of negative 1920, a start offset of 30, and an end offset of 
20. And so the effect of that is going to be that that sort of shrinks back down into the text like that. So then we need to do the same thing with the other groups. And again, we can just copy that rectangle with its ramp attached. So holding down the Option key, drag it onto the Down group. And obviously in this case, we need to just have the opposite direction for that end value. So positive 19, 20. What we might actually just do here is just change these offsets. So I might actually there have a start offset of 40, just so they're not happening at the same time. Makes it a little bit more interesting. Then let's copy this onto the left group. So holding down the Option key, drag the rectangle mask onto the left group. Obviously, we need to change the direction here. So apply to properties transform position X. So the position is actually good. 1920 is good. And let's just change that start offset to 20. So this is looking pretty good. So uh, finally, well, let's copy it onto the right group. So option, drag it onto the right group. In this case, we just need to add a negative sign to that end value. And let's just adjust that start offset. Let's go back to 30 for that. So now the overall effect is looking like this. Now, a final little detail I might like to add is to soften the edge of these rectangular masks. So let's select them all. So select one and command click on the others to select them all like that. And then let's just set that feather to 100. And you can see that's kind of softened off the, the edges of those and makes for a slightly silkier result. The thing I want to point out now is that this is completely editable and it will actually follow along. So if we type the word blueprint, for example, it all works perfectly. Or we could type editable, and that also works perfectly. Obviously with different fonts and different font sizes, those scrape values are going to have to be slightly different. So if you were, for example, making this as a template, a title template for Final Cut, you'd need to publish these different scrape positions for each of the directions. So the only thing really left to do is a little bit of color. I think we could probably just group all these lines. So right, left, up and down. Let's make a new group or rather let's right click and group them and let's set this group to add and then filters, color and colorize. And again, let's just pick our background color and just increase its brightness like that. Maybe slightly reduce its saturation like that. So they kind of all sit in a little bit better. And I think we're more or less done. So I don't want to go into too much detail about how to publish this as a title template, but I'll just show you what I've done. And if we come over to here, you can see that I've published those uh, scrape values. I've published the ability to turn off those lines just so you can set them up correctly. And we can disable the background and just be left with the grid or we can just disable the grid, or we can disable both. If you were just using the grid, you'd probably want to make it stronger. But anyway, loads of things that you can kind of customize if you're actually publishing it yourself. Obviously, this is entirely editable, as you can see. If we change the font, it sort of often kind of works. But if you've got a shorter word, for example, like short, you see that the left and right don't actually f work properly. And that's, you just need to adjust these scrape values so, till you've actually got some lines. Well, it's not too difficult, really. Obviously, you need to avoid that 
kind of blockiness, I'm making a mess of this, but uh, you get the idea. So it's probably fairly usable in most instances with just a little bit of uh, attention here. And what I've also done is I've made the build-in optional, so it publishes a checkbox for that, but it means that you can extend the end of it as long as you want. So after the animation is finished, you can have a, as long a hold as you want, but the actual animation duration is protected. Anyway, I hope that's been an interesting one. Hope you have fun adapting it to your own needs. Thanks very much for watching. See you again on the next one.